In ancient Iran, it was thought that there was a millennium of darkness and a millennium of light. The millennium of darkness means emptiness. The millennium of light means emptiness as well. The third millennium is the fusion of darkness and light and the beginning of history. Hi, I'm Mina. Today we are going to see how creation has been in Iranian myths through the ancient books and stories. So it's from the fusion of darkness and light that human history begins. In Iranian mythology, the phenomenon of creation is associated with Gyumerta or Kyumers. Mersa as it turns out means man. Unusual interpretation is that Gyumerta is related to the gov which means cow which means cow man. He was perhaps the first man to use a cow for a living. But it makes more sense that it's Gyumerta which means plant man. The reason for this claim goes back to the Indo-Iranian mythology. In mythology it is said that when Kyumers died his sperm fell to the ground. When the sperm penetrated the earth, it became a plant similar to Ribab. Two convoluted plants, male and female, Mesh and Meshyane, came out of the earth in form of Ribab plants. And Mesh and Meshyane, coupling with each other, gave birth to human beings. So maybe Kyumars was a plant himself, which makes sense in myths. And we have some poetry about the plant human in Iran. And also interestingly, in Indo Iranian mythology, one of the ancient gods is called Vak, which means speech. And there's a tree in mythology called Vakvak which is the same, the talking tree. So early man then was probably likened to a fertile and eloquent tree. So in mythology, Kumars may have been the plant human. Some may not accept this assumption but we are sure that he is the first kind of human being and this is the beginning of the creation or the beginning of history. Kumars has a son named Siamak who is killed by demons and Siamak also means plant. Siamak may also be driven from the word vac which means speech and the first part of the word Sion implies ivy. Therefore Siamak can be the same talking plant that is killed by the demons. After Siamak, Hushang is introduced in Shahnameh. I don't want to talk about him and what he did in detail such as he discovered iron, discovered fire, he became a blacksmith, he discovered animal husbandry, he sewed clothes from leather. In fact he established the society and civilization. But after him is the story of his son, Tahmures. Again, the story is about how King Tahmures restrained animals and demons. But there is a strange point about this story in Shahnameh. Ferdowsi says that the demons teach 33 scripts and languages to Tahmures to gain their freedom. This part has made many people think that Iranian did not have any scripts and languages, but this is not true. This story goes back to one of the Indo-Iranian myths. In that myth, Indra releases the forces trapped by the Ahrimanan, which means demons. The god king Indra faces the demons of Drod. The demon of Drod impersons the creative forces of nature and the duty of Shah Pahlavan or the hero king is to liberate them. In this way, Tahmures frees the culture and language that the demons had seized. Tahmures also subdues Ahriman and turns him into his horse and with him he travels from one end of the world to the other one and discovers the world. All these stories are briefly presented in Shahnameh. And then Shahnameh starts presenting Jamshid, whom we know from the ancient Indo-Iranian culture. Jamshid has a different interpretation in that culture, he is the first human and related to sun. And for this reason we also call him Jamshid. The word Shid means radiant. Jam in ancient Indo-Iranian mythology is Yam or Yama. After his death, Jam becomes the guide of the dead to the other world because he is the first human that died. That is why he becomes the god of dead there in the other world. Even in Japanese, Yama is the name of the god of dead. In Iran, he appears as a king and because he cannot be the god of dead, he becomes an exemplary king. And at the end of his time, he becomes arrogant and this part is perhaps linked to death. In the end, he becomes arrogant and turns back to God and this is where the other Indo-Iranian myth Zahak appears. Zahak executes Jamshid by sawing him in half and taking his throne. Therefore, in Shahnameh, creation arises from chaos. And from the beginning, there is the war between good and evil, the conflict between the human and the demon, and the combination of the two. In Bundahisht, it is said that Jam forced a young man to have intercourse with a fairy and the demon to have intercourse with a woman. That is the mixing of humans and demons. I will not talk about the story of Zahag because it is a separate long story. But the critical point is when Feridun overthrew Zahak, he married two of Zahak's wives, Shahnaz and Arnavaz.
Shahnaz. Shahnaz and Arnavaz were Jam's daughters and became the wives of Zahak, who is a demon. So they lived with a demon for a thousand years and gave birth to children. So you see, the third millennium begins with marriage of the light and the dark. So the children of Freydun who overthrew the demon in a way are themselves a mixture of demon and human being. And who are these children? Iraj, Tur, and Salm. Freydun divides his land between these three. Shakespeare alert, just like what King Lear did, and divided his land between his three daughters. It is said that that these names could be the names of three nations or tribes. Iraj means Iranians, Tur means Turanians, and Sal means Sarmatians. And in fact, it seems about right. Sarmatians later lived in Asia Minor, current Turkey, Turanians live in current Afghanistan and Central Asia, and Iraj is supposed to live in Iran. It is said in Shahnameh that the two brothers envy Iraj and kill him. And from here on, history of wars begins. All history is the war between relatives. There are wars between brothers and nephews. All the forces that must have been used for prosperity were spent destroying brothers and relatives. Zahak's story can be mentioned as an example of patricide. He kills his father Merdas who was a fine man. There are many examples of fratricide in Sassanid history. Anushirvan kills his father, Yazdgerd is actually killed by his son, Shiria kills his father Khosro Parviz just as Khosro Parviz killed his father Hormoz. Therefore this is a history full of fratricide and on the other hand full of filicide. We know that Vishdas caused the death of his son Svandiyar and Kekabus caused the death of his son Siyar. And of course, Rustam kills his son Sohra. We don't have much time to talk about all these, but I will later talk about these stories in next videos. And we have some examples of fratricide. We know that Salm and Tur kill their brother Iraj, and Shogat kills his brother Rustam, and so on. I don't want to make you tired. Shahnameh is a repetitive historical context. Throughout the Shahnameh, you can see that the kings spoke of justice, wisdom, and prosperity aspirations at the beginning of their region. Gradually, the structure of power changes them. Finally, they would become arrogant and do what is destructive of a nation, violence, lies, and you can find other examples in Shahnameh, which we will talk about all in this series of videos very soon.